There may be a snowstorm in Knoxville, but it's not enough to put out that fire known as Dalton Connect. Good evening and welcome to the House of Oak Sports Channel. My name is Frank Rock. I'm happy to come at you this evening with another just one of those performances where you just shake your head in disbelief. And uh, you're like, wow. Dalton Connect once again tonight, 39 points, leads Tennessee to a victory, a victory that was very comfortable tonight. Tennessee wins 85-66. If you listen to the Tennessee Florida preview that I did yesterday, I predicted 85-70. I was close on that one. I was close, but I'm happy with 85-66. This Tennessee team was dominant tonight. They come out on the get-go. And there's a lot of things I liked. And I'll get to that as I go on. But as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. As I'm one guy doing three sports, and I'm having a blast doing this. It ain't no grind. It ain't no hustle. It's none of that bullshit. It's a hobby. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. And thank you guys for tuning in. And thank you guys for supporting this channel so far. Tennessee basketball goes to 3-1 and one in the conference. A big win at home against Florida. And I looked at this matchup yesterday and looking at the NCAA statistics as well. Florida was scoring just a little bit under 90 points per game. This looked to me like a game where Tennessee could get up and run a little bit and see what they could do. I also dropped a video yesterday. I talked about is Rick Barnes evolving. Did the uh, old dog learn new tricks? We're seeing an offense right now. The last three games, I think once they got down against Mississippi State, you're seeing him. He's turned it over to Dalton Connect and letting him go. Since that point, this dude has been on fire. 39 points. I, I thought it was some pretty interesting statistics that they put up toward the end of the game. And he's in some big company. Back-to-back 25-point -back games. He's the first since Chris Lofton in a while. Back-to-back -back over 30-point games. First since Chris Lofton. Back-to-back -back over 35-point games. This uh, First since Allen Houston, which, uh, you know, some of you guys around my age watching, you know, it's been a minute since Allen Houston's been down. That's some big company, and that's some of the greatest players in the history of this basketball program. Two guys, Allen Houston, Chris Lofton. Chris Lofton, probably the best shooter in program history. Allen Houston, one of the best pro, uh, players in program history. But my first bullet point says it all. It's Dalton Connect's world. By God, we're living in it. And it's awesome to watch. This is a lot of fun. I don't remember a time when I've been watching Tennessee basketball, when Tennessee gets the ball, like if I'm kind of messing around trying to do multitask a little bit, when they throw the ball into Dalton Connect, it's must-see TV right now. With the role he's on, that role he got on the first half. And I thought it was impressive how Tennessee did that tonight as well, which I'll touch upon here in just a couple minutes. But that role he got on, after he'd come back in the game, he wasn't missing. Must see TV. And this is some of the craziest stuff that we've seen at Tennessee in a while in terms of offensive basketball. And who would have thought? Who would have thought? This team gets in those lulls sometimes. They go through those moments where they make you want to pull your hair out. Right now, they figured something out. They have figured something out. They're a physical team. A non-negotiable, I talked about it yesterday for Rick Barnes, it's going to be defense. Don't Connect plays good enough defense. Jimmy Dyke said it, and I couldn't agree more with him. Don't Connect plays good enough defense. It's going to translate to the NBA. This dude is going to be a player in the NBA. If you watch the Lakers and you watch Austin Reeves, there's the obvious comparisons, but their game is a lot alike. I see another Austin Reeves coming up in him. They talked a little bit about he's got some Durant in him that Barnes stated as well. That's pretty. That's a pretty damn good comparison, right there. That's a pretty good person to have some characteristics of. But don't connect. He's just on fire 
right now. They tried pretty hard to get him that 40, and based on how those shots went, it just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> there was uh, some pretty ugly stuff late trying to get that 40th point, 40th, 41st, 40, 42nd point. But just just an awesome night. Give him the credit. But Jonas Adu, once again, one of my talking points yesterday, I was like, how would he handle? This was one of the best, if not the best, rebounding team in the Southeastern Conference coming in. Jonas Adu, he held his own once again tonight. He held his own once again, 19 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, you had Connect with eight rebounds. Uh, Josiah Jordan James, seven rebounds. You're kind of seeing this team in, you know, what they're starting to do a little bit. They're starting to evolve. They're starting to figure out an offensive identity. And you had a Waka come in, get his eight rebounds as well. But, you know, a big stat I thought tonight was the rebounding battle. Tennessee won that battle 44-37. They out-assisted 17-7. Florida coming in shoots right at 46% from field goal range. Tennessee held them to 29.9%, basically 30%. That's impressive defense tonight. That is impressive defense. And, you know, a physical team, this Florida team wasn't ready for it. They got punched in the mouths. They got their throats stepped on. Didn't have an answer for it. Don't connect big game with 39 points. Jonas Adu, 19 and 10. I'll go through the stats. Here a little bit. Sakai Ziegler, seven points. He only took two shots. He was two for two. One for one from three-point range. Two for three from the uh, free throw line. He did again have three turnovers. He's got to cut down on those a little bit. Four assists, three turnovers. Vescovy, two points. It, it is what it is at this point with Vescovy. There was a couple times I just felt bad for the guy. He drove in and just threw the ball up. I mean, come on. Come on. Two points, three rebounds, two assists, no turnovers for him. But a couple of them might as well have been turnovers. I mean, I feel bad for the guy at this point. He, he is a shell of his former self. And I hope we'll see him break out of it. I really do. Uh, Josiah Jordan, names James, three points, seven boards, three assists. Awaka, two points, eight rebounds. I'm going to get to this guy in a minute. It's my, one of my bullet points here. J.P. Estrella, seven points, one rebound. And then you had Phillips, zero, Dillion, zero, Carr, zero, Justin Ganey, God bless him as well. He He's struggling. Zero points, zero from two, uh, zero for two from three-point range. Jemai Meshack, six points. Keep talking about it. I would like to see a little bit more of this guy's offensive game. He had a couple of nice moves tonight. Um, in the first half, he had a nice little kind of crossover, stopped about that top of the circle, and knocked it down. That. That's a big time shot. That's not an easy shot for a lot of guys. And he's he's like I said, he's he's a guy I want to see a little bit more of there. Um JP Estrella talked about it here. Uh, well, the first thing I said I was gonna talk about coming. Don't connect went out in the first half. He'd taken one shot. He went out and Barnes went to the backups. So to speak. they increased the lead. I thought that was big at that point. Increased it out to double digits without connect on the court, without Adu for a point in time, and they were able to extend it out. Meshack had some big baskets in there. They tried it again the second half, and Florida cut it to 10. So it worked in the first half, did not work out as well in the second half. But um, get to J.P. Estrella. He got more minutes now. He got more run. It kind of surprised me. But Barnes went to him, liked what I saw out of him. He was aggressive. The one negative I had with his hands. Yeah, they talked about Jonas Adu. Jimmy Dykes talked about him, about how his hands have gotten so much better. That's where Estrella is going to have to take that next step as well. If the pass wasn't right to him, he struggled with it. He struggled with some tough passes. I, I didn't think were that bad of passes. Uh, if you had a guy with good hands, those are good passes and probably lean to a layup. Now, Florida's a big team. Could have been blocked, possibly. Could have led to a layup. layup Could have led to a foul. So, Estrella, as he puts on that weight, puts on that muscle, gets stronger, his hands will get better. There's a lot of potential there. He earned himself more minutes moving forward tonight. You're not, it's not going to be at the expense of Jonas Adu, but could you fit him in possibly at some point with that? And then I talked about, you know, one of my bullet points as well, has this offense evolved? You're starting to see it is the Donk Connect. I love it. I love it. 
I've been hard on Rick Barnes in the past. I've been hard on him a little bit on here. But you're seeing a guy who he knows his team. He knows his team. He knows who his guy is. This is a dude that's got some big time NBA potential. First round pick. He's been in the mock drafts that I've seen first round. His stock is only going up right now. It is only going up. He's riding him. And I don't blame him. You've got a couple teams coming up. Alabama Saturday. Saturday, they average over 90 points, right at 90 points. For, they're one of the top five scoring offenses in all college basketball. you got Kentucky later on. You're going to see twice. One of the top five scoring offenses in basketball. They're going to need this. They're going to need it. I like what they're doing. They are going to need contributions from other guys. But Ziegler, he, he, he did what he needed to do tonight. But other games, the last couple games, Georgia, Mississippi State, he was there too. He was there doing the scoring as well. Adu's doing his that, – that's your guys. Don't connect, without a doubt, the go-to guy. Jonas Adu's been big. You know, even his, his Mississippi State game, I would say, was not up to par. He still had nine points in that game. He had a good game at Georgia. Heck of a game at Georgia. Some big-time defense at that last five minutes of that game. This team's – was Mississippi State a wake-up call? Did Mississippi State force this team – to change philosophy. They're still running their same offense a lot, but it's it's a lot more of the Dalton Connect show. And it's going to be. And this guy's going to get the pub. He's going to get the attention. He has another big game Saturday. There won't be a co-SEC player of the week beside him. It will be the SEC player of the week. But he's going to have to score. They're going to need him to be big Saturday because this is an Alabama team that can score. It's a good basketball team coming to Knoxville on Saturday. Got to be happy with how this team responded in Mississippi State. you got to be happy with how this team responded Saturday when they started getting punched in the mouth. They didn't die. They didn't roll over. They took it on the chin, and they bounced back. And then, you know, you dance. You're going to shuck a jive. You better make sure don't connect and Tennessee's done. Georgia didn't. Florida didn't have that opportunity tonight. Tennessee got on them early. Their second string prolonged it. Don't Connect took over and iced it. It did get a little, little dicey in the second half, down to 10 points, but then Connect, Adu come back in. They pulled back away and ended that thing. Tennessee basketball is playing good. I like what I'm seeing. I don't know, like I said earlier, I don't know, cannot remember, probably back to Grant and Schofield and those guys, a time when Tennessee's offense has been must-see. It's been a while. It's fun to watch. We'll see where it goes Saturday. I expect a high-scoring game Saturday. Can Tennessee's defense cause Alabama trouble? That's what we got coming up on Saturday. For the week coming up, uh, yesterday, if you're a baseball fan, dropped my first 2024 preview about the pitchers. Of course, D1 Baseball released their rankings today. Tennessee's ranked ninth in those rankings. Uh, Perfect Game had released theirs, had them 11th. So they're going to be right around that 10 range, give or take, on it. I'll be dropping a preview tomorrow. I'm excited about the catchers, an old catcher here. So I'm excited uh, about dropping that one. And then there'll be more content as well, more basketball. Uh, I'll probably eventually get into bringing some football, but I'm loving covering basketball. I'm loving this baseball stuff as well. It's fun. It's a lot of fun to me. Thank you guys for tuning in. Frank Rock, House of Orange, the most well-rounded channel on YouTube, covering all three sports. We're going to cover them all all year long. All right. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. Keep on tuning in. Give me any feedback you got, guys, good or bad. I welcome it all. I'm not naive to believe I can't improve, but thank you guys. Enjoy your evening. And as always, Dalton Connect rules. Go Vols. Dream.